Okay, one more example involving L'Hopital's rule. We can use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x. And we'll do this using the techniques of logarithms that we saw in the, the last example. So what I'm going to do is just think of this as a function. And I'm going to think of, think of it as y equals 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x. And we're going to take the limit of this as x approaches infinity. Let's go ahead and manipulate this a little bit algebraically first using logarithms. So we have a little equation here. One thing equals another. Let's take the log of each side. So we get the natural log of y equals the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x and then use the properties of logarithms to take this exponent and move it out front as a multiplier. And so we get the natural log of y is equal to x times the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did in the previous problem. I have the natural log of something times x, but instead of writing it as this this a natural log multiplied by x, I'm going to write it as that natural log divided by 1 over x. So this equals the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x divided by 1 over x. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is take the limit of this as x approaches infinity. Okay, so the goal now is to find the limit. So the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x over 1 over x. Now we can't evaluate this by substitution because as x approaches infinity this becomes infinitely small 1 over x and we're just left with the natural log of 1 which is 0. And as x becomes infinitely large, this 1 over x becomes infinitely small, which is 0. So this is 0 over 0. But we can evaluate this limit uh, using L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. This will be the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of the numerator. Now, the derivative of the natural log of a function will be 1 over that function times the derivative of the inner function. So this will be 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times the derivative of the inner function. So we differentiate this term by term, and the derivative of 1 is 0. And the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Okay, remember, that's just the power rule. 1 over x is x to the negative 1. So we have negative 1, and then we have x to the new exponent is reduced by 1. So that's x to the negative 2, which is the same as x to the positive 2 in the denominator. And so all this is over the derivative of the denominator. So again, the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Now, this looks like a great big complex fraction, but this simplifies really, really fast. See, this entire negative 1 over x squared and negative 1 over x squared, that all cancels out. And then look here. As x approaches infinity, 1 over x goes to 0. So this, in other words, this limit can be evaluated with a simple substitution. We put in infinity for x, and that goes away, and we're just left with 1 over 1, which is 1. So that limit evaluates to 1. Now, what did we just find? Not the limit of y, this function we called y. What we just found was the natural log of y as x approaches infinity. See, the natural log of y, we rearrange to this. 
So the limit of the natural log of y as x approaches infinity is 1. So I'll write the reasoning here for the final step. What we've just shown is that as x approaches infinity, the natural log of y approaches 1. Right there. That's the 1 that we got. So what is y? If the natural log of y is equal, equal to 1, then y has to equal e. How about that? The number e. And you might recognize the original expression that we started with as one of the ways that e is defined. In fact, back at the very beginning of this chapter, we talked about this, that as x approaches infinity, this expression approaches a value of e. And that's actually one of the common ways that e is defined in a lot of mathematical textbooks.